Hi everyone, Melody here. I am back with another From the Heart Friday. Like most of these videos, it's kind of out of the blue, just whenever it comes to me, I want to share it. And earlier this week, the Father laid this scripture on my heart. I think it might have been because, I don't know, I really, this is kind of for an, another video, but I, I received some clothing in the mail. There was a shirt in it that I had picked out that says there's a cloud. Um, and so that scripture kind of just went through my head. And I think it might have been the night prior that I was actually reading it. Um, and funny enough, uh, yesterday, on the day that I filmed this, um, yesterday, Elevation Worship actually shouted me out um, with the There's a Cloud cover. And so that was a really cool experience. But it was just like the theme of this week was There's a Cloud. I kind of just had some time before we were heading back home to just sit and dive into that scripture and I wanted to kind of share that moment with you all. Um, I'm not sure where this is going to go, but I just want to share my heart because it's from the Heart Friday. So let's get into it. It's going to be 1 Kings 18 and we're going to be looking specifically at verses 41 to 46. So let's just go ahead and read that. It says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked, and said, There's nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There's a cloud, as small as a man's hand, rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. And what had been happening prior to that section of the scripture was Elijah, the prophet of the Lord, had come to Samaria, and basically they had just had this competition to see whose God was God. Unfortunately for the people who were worshiping Baal, their God did not show up. And then Elijah had his turn and the Lord just came and showed up. He definitely showed up and it actually made the people fall on their faces and declare that he was God. And um, then, the, then the priests of the false god were killed. Then we have Elijah here. It was right after this that Elijah heard the sound of an abundance of rain coming. And this was significant because like I had just said, they were in the midst of a drought. It had been three years since there was any dew or rain in Samaria. And so for him to hear the abundance of rain was something crazy. Throughout scripture, sound is tied to restoration. And so, since our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, there's always going to be a sound tied to restoration. If you look through all the scriptures, every story, whenever a new covenant is made, there's always a sound. There's always a song bringing in a new day. And so us living in this day, it is up to us to hear that sound and to bring that sound forth. And I like to use the analogy of walking through the woods. I love the woods. Um, but walking through the woods, whenever you hear something, you you stop. You stop moving and you're like, shh. Do you hear it? And then you hear it because you stop and you see. So a lot of times there's a, we get really busy. Um, we keep doing and doing the work of the Lord, which is fantastic, but we forget to seize and we forget to stop and be still and know that he's God. And we forget that we always, we always need to refocus ourselves and take the time to just listen to what he's saying. It is so important for us to tune our ears to the sound of the Father. And if we really want to be followers of Jesus, we have to do what he did. Every single thing that he acted upon was because of what the Father was speaking to him, because he was in tune with the Father. And Elijah was in tune with God in these scriptures. And that's why he was able to hear the sound of an abundance of rain that was coming for these people who were in a drought. And as the people of God, 
in this world and these days it's important for us to always be listening and always be aware of what he's doing and when he's moving and what he's bringing to a group of people who cannot hear him or see him because they don't know him it's our job to make an invisible god visible to this world we need to listen we need to listen and we need to always hear the sound and be able to recognize his voice above all the noise. That's the first thing I wanted to point out because that's the, that, that phrase, the sound of an abundance of rain stood out to me as soon as I read it. So maybe that's for someone. And then if we continue on, it says that after, after his servant had gone out to the sea to look, for for the rain that he was hearing he didn't see anything until the seventh time that he went out the number seven i'm not going to go into it i can go really deep into that but there's just a lot of um, meaning behind that number in scripture especially but i want to focus on what he saw when he did see something he said that he saw a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea and if we go into the hebrew of it that the word for cloud is of, and it means covering or darkness. The root word of it is uv or eve. And what's really cool about the Hebrew language is that every root word is an action. It's a verb. And so the root word of this cloud means to wrap around or to cover. And then if we go to the word hand, so he saw that there was a cloud as small as the man's as a man's hand the hebrew word for hand is calf and it means the hollow of the hand or the palm and so he saw this hand rising out of the sea that would be a covering and it meant darkness because it means that it is completely covering like it is utterly surrounded by this thing and then if we continue to read we see that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. So we just have this picture of this cloud rising out of the sea and coming and covering the entire area that had been in a drought and just raining upon them. Just showers and showers and an abundance of this rain that they hadn't had in three years. I, I don't know, just certain words stick out to me. And so what I... I, know, I promise that this is all coming together in the end. It might not be making sense yet, but I think it will. The one word that stood out to me was wind. It said, it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind. And there was a heavy rain. But the wind. I went in, into the Hebrew again. I like going into the Hebrew, guys, okay? The word for wind is ruach. Or ruach. I forget if it's k or ch. Different. I don't know. What is crazy is that Ruach means spirit. And so this scripture is saying that what had come out of the waters to surround them and cover them and wrap them in the palm of his hand was a spirit. Are you, are you like picking up what I'm putting down? What had just happened was Elijah pointed the people to the Lord and they fell on their faces. They denied the false God of Baal and they declared the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. The moment that they declared who the Lord is and they accepted that and they switched their way of thinking and living and everything. That was the moment the spirit of the Lord came out of the waters and poured into them. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? In, in, my, in my heart, there is just something really special about that. What the servant had just witnessed was the Spirit of God coming out of the waters and pouring onto the people who had just accepted him as the true God of Israel. The first time we saw this, guys, was at the very beginning of creation in Genesis 1-2. It says, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And yes, I checked. The word for spirit in the scripture is Ruach. So the same Ruach that was upon the face of the waters 
in the beginning of creation was the same Ruach that came out of the waters to pour into the people who had been in a drought. Isn't that amazing? Maybe I'm just getting too excited about something that doesn't mean anything to y'all, but it, that's like, I, I, in this case, the sound of rain was bringing restoration, not just to the land that was dry, but to a people who had never known the true God. I just, I, that moves me because that applies to us now because as his people, we are to listen for the sound of him coming to the people who are in need of him in every way. So I guess what I'm trying to say in a way that is practical is that the drought will end. But I just feel like a lot of you who watch these videos and who listen to me and who send me messages, it's like this constant theme in messages that you feel numb. Like you watch my testimony video and you relate to it because it's something that you're going through right now. I know a lot of you are in that season, you're in that drought, you're in the middle of winter and you're wanting spring. You need the rain, you feel empty and you wanna be filled back up. And I promise you, the drought will end. Winter will pass, spring will come. It comes every year without fail. Sometimes we have to wait a little longer Sometimes it comes early and surprises us, and we're very happy about that. A lot of times in scripture, you'll see it talk about how um, the people of God are like trees. If we really want to think about it in that way, Melissa Helser talks about this. The winter trees know that spring comes. They don't worry. Their roots get deeper in the winter, and they know that spring will come, and they will thrive again. And so I just want to encourage you all by saying that I promise that the rain is coming. Maybe even sooner than you think. Because he is good and he's the God of abundance and he is the provider. And the moment that you take the time to stand still and just listen, you'll find the answers that you're looking for. You'll hear his voice. You'll find your rain. And what does water do? It brings life. So you will find your life. You will find everything that you'll ever need. And I promise it's coming. It's just in the times of waiting that we grow a little uneasy because we want to see it. We want to see him move. But just like Roman says, faith is by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we have to grow our roots in the word and stand upon those promises and know that he always follows through. And the God who knows your needs, even some things that you don't even know you need, he will provide for. He's coming, so get ready. That's all for today. I will see you guys next week. I love you so much. I hope you have a wonderfully blessed day.